This video is going to look at states of matter and particle theory. I'm going to look at the three classical states of matter, how to interconvert between them, and how particle theory can be used to explain the arrangement and movement of the particles within those three states of matter. So first of all, the diagrams. This is an image of a solid, a particle in a box image of a solid. Okay, you can see it's regular, repeating pattern. Uh, the particles are very close together, ordered, and uh, they are touching. In a liquid, you'll notice that I've simply tried to make the system look more amorphous, more disorganized. They're still close. They're still generally touching. They should be touching. They start from the bottom. They shouldn't be floating. But there are some gaps appearing in the image, and that's to show the greater level of disorder in the liquid compared to the solid. Now, the gas diagram, much more uh, open. There's more space between the particles. They are not touching and they are not starting at the bottom building up, they are floating. These are all ways of showing that the gas particles are moving at high speed and are more irregular in nature in terms of their arrangement. Changing from solid to liquid to gas and back again, these are the, the changes in state. I'm going to give you the names of those changes in state. So when you sufficiently heat a solid to, uh, to change it into a liquid, we call that phase change, that state change, melting. Okay. Um, when you continue to heat a liquid sufficiently, uh, it will change into a gas. And there are two ways of describing that, evaporation or boiling. They are slightly different, okay? Evaporation it usually occurs at lower uh, temperatures, and it is generally that some of the particles have sufficient kinetic energy to convert from a liquid to a gas. Boiling would be the temperature required for the majority or even all of the particles to have sufficient energy to turn from a liquid to a gas. So it's uh, magnitude in terms of uh, amount of particles able to do this. Evaporation, some, boiling, the vast majority. Um, we can go back from a gas to a liquid via cooling, okay? Often this is happening on a cold winter's day on the glass around your houses, okay? And this is called condensation or condensing, okay? When a gas converts into a liquid. When a liquid is converted back into a solid, it's called freezing. Please don't call it solidification, it's called freezing. Okay, and that's sufficient cooling to turn these liquids back into an ordered solid structure. You can even go directly from a solid to a gas. Okay, uh, so this has no liquid phase and no liquid state. It simply is going straight from a solid to a gas uh, and upon heating, sufficient heating. That's called sublimation or subliming. Some substances that can do that include carbon dioxide and iodine. Uh, they can sublose as solids, they can sublime. Dry ice is a good example of sublimation. Um, the opposite of that process, i.e. taking a gas and cooling it sufficiently to turn it back into a solid directly whilst not going through a liquid uh, state, is called deposition. Depositing those gas particles back down into a solid. Deposition is going straight from a gas to a solid. Going from a solid to a gas is sublimation. Okay. Um, Right, I want to really focus on how particle theory helps to describe exactly what's going on in the solid. So um, the key thing when you're talking about particle theory is, is do mention the word particle as much as possible. So explaining the arrangement and movement of particles in a solid. Okay, uh, the first thing to note is that the particles are very tightly packed. Okay, they are really, sorry, here we go. They are really tightly packed. Okay, uh, they are regularly arranged. They've got a really regular arrangement, like our layers. And finally, the particles are only able to vibrate in fixed position upon a certain level of heat, heat energy being um, transferred to them. So until you make them melt, the particles will only be vibrating in fixed positions to uh, transfer that heat energy to other particles in the, stru in the structure. They have a regular repeating structure, they have a regular arrangement, and they are tightly packed. What about the how we apply particle theory to liquids? Well, liquids slightly different, okay. Um, the particles are still arranged close together. They're still touching in liquids. So you need to emphasize that the uh, particles are still arranged closely in liquids, okay? Um, that hasn't ch uh, changed. The particles are arranged irregularly in liquids. They, are, they have that amorphous, is a great word to use there. They have that irregular arrangement compared to solids. So particles are arranged irregularly in uh, liquids. And finally, um, the particles are actually now not just vibrating, they are free moving, free flowing. They are moving past one another. Um, as they flow inside their container. Now, finally, using particle theory to explain how gases are arranged and particles and gases are arranged and how they move. So again, try and emphasize, overemphasize the use of the word particle. Notice every time I've made a bullet point, I've used the word particle, that's because I'm talking about particle theory. So talking about the particles within a gas. The particles are far apart. They are spaced out, they are spread out. The particles are arranged in an irregular 
fashion. They have no regular pattern and they are very uh, disorganized. And finally, the particles are moving at high speed, often bouncing off each other in an elastic fashion. They are filling their container, okay? So, but when talking about particle theory, you need to emphasize that they are far apart. This is the particles. They are irregularly, they have no regular arrangement. They are regular in their arrangement and they are moving at high speed with great amounts of kinetic energy, bouncing off each other elastically as much as possible. That explains the basics of the key states of matter and also how particle theory can be applied to explain the arrangement and movement of particles within those classical states of matter.